I checked this out weeks ago for a bit of light reading. This is light. The internet aesthetic that romanticizes education, dark academia channels the glamour of Oxbridge intellectuals mixed with a heavy dose of gothic mystery. I mean, haven't we all been obsessed with the idea of going to a boarding school in New England and getting up to like mischief with our friends and learning all about poetry and literature? But knowledge and education are traditionally associated with light, not darkness. Think university mottos like Luxe Veritas, light and truth, the enlightenment, or even just the way ideas are often shown like this. So why is the aesthetic of elite scholarship so dark? To understand dark academia's darkness, we need to look at its origins. In particular, Donna Tartt's 1992 novel, The Secret History. This is just a staple in the dark academia canon. Which uses the story of a group of murderous classic students to show that when knowledge is subject to elitist gatekeeping, it can perpetuate a classist, dehumanizing view of the world. The Secret History is a novel-length condemnation of academia and pretentiousness. And it's not even like it's subtle. Likewise, dark academia expresses a generation's complicated feelings about education. Also, what did I get from my money? What is college? Today, faced with a highly competitive job market and crippling tuition fees, most young people see the idea of majoring in ancient Greek at an Ivy League university as an utter fantasy. I went to college too, you know where it left me? I have $50,000 in student loans. Dark academia yearns for a less practical, more beautiful education, the kind that edifies your soul. And while presenting an idealized vision of scholarship, it sheds light on the failings of the actual academic world. It replicates the trappings of exclusionary institutions, but in itself is democratic and accessible. Here's our take on dark academia and what its darkness illuminates. If you're new here, be sure to subscribe and click the bell to be notified about all of our new videos. I want to thank Babbel for sponsoring this video. You wouldn't be watching a video about dark academia if you didn't love opening your mind. And Babbel is a great way to master a new language in less time than it takes to get through this secret history. Click the link in the description below to sign up for six months of Babbel and get an extra six months free. When you wanna be this, but you also wanna be this. First appearing as a tag on Tumblr entries about books in the mid-2010s, by 2021, Dark Academia had millions of posts on TikTok and Instagram, signaling it had officially grown into what, in internet parlance, is called an aesthetic. It's day four of dressing up as different aesthetics to school, and it's finally Dark Academia. Landing somewhere between a subculture, a lifestyle, and a visual philosophy, internet aesthetics are rapidly emerging as Gen Z's primary way of communicating what is valuable and beautiful to them. I may be in Wisconsin, but spiritually, I'm at a cafe in Dublin, Ireland, being the mysterious main character in a dark academia-inspired fantasy novel. In philosophy, aesthetics is a field of study that uses notions of perception and taste to determine what is good and how virtue relates to beauty. Aesthetics, generally, is a branch of philosophy concerned with the study and nature of beauty. And for dark academia, the epitome of beauty is a kind of education that is exhilarating, all-consuming, and poetic. I absolutely love this aesthetic, and the understanding of knowledge is something life-giving and desperate. It's no coincidence that the dark academia aesthetic exploded in 2020, when students all over the world were sent home because of the shutdown of school campuses during the COVID-19 pandemic. They're canceling classes or they're going to online learning, not just for a couple of weeks, but, but for the rest of the year. There's nothing like being cooped up in your childhood bedroom to make college quads seem unbearably romantic. Since I was not allowed back on campus, I would have to try to recreate this vibe. Now I have this dark academia room that I can do fun things in. Dark academia is nostalgic for a bygone idea of a liberal arts university, with its vintage clothes, leather-bound books, and gothic architecture. Actually, glamorizing the past has always been a key part of elite universities' appeal. Duke sought a stone that would replicate the great universities of England and the northeastern U.S. The collegiate Gothic architecture style of American universities intentionally copied the old world prestige and wealth signifiers of England's Oxford and Cambridge. Have you ever wondered why such forward-thinking institutions chose distinctly to look so damn old? They wanted to align themselves with the historic universities of Europe. Yale tour guides even tell the likely apocryphal story that acid was poured down the university's Harkness Tower to make it look older. Even in normal circumstances, education today is heavily mediated by technology. 
Like Cottagecore, the internet aesthetic that glorifies rural life and making one's own Blackberry jam, Dark Academia encourages escape from our technocentric world by imagining a return to pre-digital eras. My girlfriend joked that she wanted wax sealed love letters, so I dyed paper with coffee and wrote to letters in Old English. Dark academics portray themselves as determinedly analog, clacking away at typewriters, writing in cursive with inkwell pens, and using real wax to seal handwritten letters. I also always tie up my letter with a piece of brown string. Education today is also highly practical. Many see it as simply a tool to ensure future employment. But Dark Academia rejects this utilitarian approach. Its content highlights education not as a means, but as an end in itself, paying tribute to why it's important personally rather than professionally and how knowledge can change and shape you. So those are the 10 books that changed my perception of the world that we live in. One creator, Scorpio Sierra, created a montage where she starts turning into the portrait of Queen Elizabeth she is studying. While another, I Feel Good Yo, shoots videos in which the protagonist seems to exist between worlds. In swift cuts and fluid transitions, he passes from the material world of Cornell's campus into some fantastical world full of roses, daggers, and blood. Both videos evoke the feeling of existing somewhere between material reality and a fantastical world you get access to through books. In today's prevailing view of education as a means to a career, the humanities are especially devalued. I was English with a minor in history, just to make sure I was fully unemployable. As actual academic Anna Quiring pointed out, today more students are choosing STEM and business degrees in the hopes of finding a lucrative career, while an English or history degree can seem like a luxury item. But Dark Academia centers the humanities. Like one of its key inspirations, Professor Keating in the movie Dead Poet Society, the aesthetic sees liberal arts as essential, not just for a job, but for a life. Poetry, beauty, romance, love, these are what we stay alive for. For some, literature can even offer more beautiful, meaningful experiences than real life. Where is the horseback ride journey I'm forced to endure with the man I hate most in the world? Where is the candlelit tavern serving plates of bread, cheese, honey, and maybe even some ale? Above all, Dark Academia reaffirms the importance of the humanities as an education of the soul. Seize the day. Gather ye rosebuds while ye may. Why does the writer use these lines? Because we are food for worms, lads. The other key part of Dark Academia content is that it's, of course, dark. It has a literal darkness, deep earth tones, gloomy weather, and poorly lit rooms that would, in practice, be terrible for reading. How long do we reckon it'll take before I knock one of these over? And a metaphorical one. Skulls, mystery, and an air of melancholy abound. This might seem surprising since the most common metaphor for knowledge is light. And a little more knowledge might light our way. Knowledge, like light, gives vision. It illuminates. Meanwhile, the dark is associated with ignorance, Think of how withholding information from someone is referred to as keeping them in the dark. Only Dumbledore made a swear not to tell you anything. Dumbledore said that. But why would he want to keep me in the dark? But the darkness of dark academia is connected to this second idiom, as it stems from the exclusionary, classist nature of much of elite education. Hundreds of years of the best and the brightest. Cultural attributes of the intellectual have long been linked with high socioeconomic status. Not surprisingly, since scholarship requires a big investment of money and time. You know what I'm noticing is that everyone just looks a lot richer than I am. Today, the cost of US universities is prohibitive for many prospective students, while others are left with crushing student debt. National Student Loans Office, where the phrase, I'll never be able to repay you, just doesn't cut it. Meanwhile, wealthy students have advantages getting into the best colleges. Most affluent people are accessing people like me, and 85% of America just can't access that level of expertise. Which leads them to go on to get the best jobs, making them more wealthy, and turning elite education into a vicious cycle that protects the unequal status quo. Many of Dark Academia's inspirations deal with this relationship between wealth, class, and access to education. Do you not do humor at state school? What? You, you think we'd touch you with a barge pole? The Secret History, which is widely considered the aesthetic's essential text, paints a picture of alluring academia only to reveal the deadly elitism beneath the surface. It's just about an elite 
group of students who are chosen by this very like arrogant professor who only chooses the most elite students to study Greek. Set in the 1980s, it is full of poetic descriptions of campus life in New England, which mirror the ambiance of dark academia content. I mean, he says this, you know, his, um, you know, my fatal flaw is, is, is morbid longing for the picturesque at all costs. The narrator is a working class transfer student, Richard Papin, an outsider who becomes enamored with a group of wealthy students in a secretive and exclusive classics class. He's very entranced by these people. He's completely taken in by the surface of things. The group is taught by a charismatic teacher, Julian Morrow, who starts his lessons by saying, I hope we're all ready to leave the phenomenal world and enter into the sublime. Just like dark academics, these scholars see the literary world as more important or at least more beautiful than reality. But their pursuit of the sublime reaches its apogee when they try to recreate a Dionysian bacchanal in a forest, and in their changed states, accidentally run into and kill a farmer. Terrifyingly, one of the students, Henry, refers to the murder as a redistribution of matter, while another, Francis, says, I mean, this man was not Voltaire we killed. A close reading of these two lines reveals the fatal flaws of the intellectual world, according to Donna Tartt. One is the danger of abstraction. Studying something implies looking at it from a distance. Taken to the extreme, this can make murder seem like a mere redistribution of matter. The other flaw is that intellectualism can be used as a mask for elitism. As the book progresses, the classmates inner darkness culminates in them conspiring to murder one of their own. After this, the group's decay accelerates, destroying the beauty Richard once saw. Essentially, The Secret History uses a why done it murder mystery plot to unearth the malignant sides of academia, the corrupting effects of elitism and classism that rot the academic system and its players from the inside. Dark Academia's aesthetic is defined by a duality. On the one hand, Dark Academia's inspirations use the gothic themes of death, madness, and wild decadence. They don't know when to stop. As harbingers of elite academia's decay and disintegration. But at the same time, the collaborative and iterative content produced by Dark Academics Online is bringing new grassroots energy to intellectualism and, in a way, revitalizing humanistic scholarship. Put a finger down if you own at least 35 books. Firstly, it democratizes the elitist world of the intellectual. Today I went thrifting for dark academia, aesthetic, clothes, and props. As Anna Quiring wrote, though you might not be able to attend private boarding school, you can listen to Chopin, read Wah, and buy scuffed black brogues from the thrift store. Through reading lists, advice on how to style thrifted vintage outfits, and tutorials on how to create a dark academia space at home, the aesthetic renders the intellectual lifestyle accessible on any budget. My taste in fashion and my budget for fashion are two very different things right now. <laughs> Secondly, dark academia is slowly making the imagery associated with elite scholarship more inclusive. There is a tendency within the dark academia community to move towards something more inclusive, something less problematic. Some have criticized the aesthetic source materials for lacking diversity. Most of the media, the photos, the films, the literature, everything like that, everyone is white. Which is somewhat inevitable given its inspirations. Everything about the university establishment, from the Western canon to the architecture, is glaringly white, male, and waspy. As Robinson Meyer writes for The Atlantic, the American college campus and its gothic filigree seem timeless, pristine constructions. Nothing could be farther from the truth. They are historical eruptions, made possible by philanthropic economics, continental envy, and racism. Some of the country's major universities, Harvard, Yale, Princeton, are drenched in sweat and sometimes the blood of Africans brought here as slaves. But when it comes to dark academia, numerous creators of color are imparting their influence. Some share reading lists with books from the Middle East, Asia, and Africa that fit the aesthetic. Others create mood boards and instructional videos that model dark academia fashions on people of color. One of the most popular dark academia creators on TikTok, Kosi Ferry, is Muslim. And finally, while some critique dark academia as being simply a fashion that emulates the outward appearance of the academic without actual substance, in reality, many dark academics are sincere and passionate intellectuals. I first fell in love with ancient Greek tragedies dating all the way back to 10th grade. Overall, what dark academia says about the state of humanistic study is both melancholy and hopeful. As Anne Acquiring writes, it's bleak to think that the humanities may soon be available to pursue only as a hobby, rather than a career or intellectual home. Gen Z make that hobby as rigorous as possible. In fact, they imagine a life of book-loving that far exceeds the capitalist university. 
focused instead on pleasure, shared interest, and amateur expertise. Namely, just the main premise that knowledge and the pursuit of knowledge is a gift. It's something desperately beautiful and exciting and wonderful, and I just love that there's a place on the internet for that. Dark Academia speaks to the enduring appeal of humanistic knowledge. No matter what anybody tells you, Words and ideas can change the world. It embodies the poetry of liberal arts education, which can transform us and make our lives more meaningful and emotionally rich. If dark academia can help liberate the glamour of scholarship from the control of intentionally exclusive institutions, it can help the beauty of knowledge to illuminate the world for all of us. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. If you want to extend your knowledge base, a great place to start is with a new language, and the best way to learn is with Babbel. Beyond their fun conversation-based curriculum, a Babbel subscription comes with podcasts, games, and live online classes. Plus, it really works. Studies have shown that 15 hours of Babbel are equivalent to a semester of college Spanish. There are so many benefits to being bilingual. You can connect with more people, be comfortable traveling to new countries, and gain fresh insight into works of art that originate in other languages. What nuance are you losing in subtitles? Did you know that Russian and Greek have different words for light blue and dark blue? And studies have found that people who speak those languages can actually see blue better than English speakers? Learning a new language doesn't just open up new places to you, it gives you a new lens with which to perceive your regular world. Click the link in the description below to sign up for six months of Babbel and get an extra six months free. This video was written by friend of the take Anya Formozova. If you liked the ideas here, you can check out her channel Q22 for more interesting cultural insights.